vamos a comenzar con la entrevista con John McCormick desde Ginebra. Well, uh, John, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. Uh, you just came back from uh, Geneva. Pretty exciting show, huh? It was a terrific show, yeah. Very exciting. Um, a nice, um, interesting balance of uh, the usual exotic supercars and a whole raft of new small cars and mini cars that uh, has an individual appeal. So it was a good show. Yeah, I, I guess uh, Geneva is known by that. Like, and I guess that's why Lamborghini always uh, picks it to show their newest thing and that Huracan looks pretty sharp, huh? Yeah, the Huracan uh, was a lot better than uh, last year. They had the Venino, which was uh, sort of looked like a Batmobile and is a bit crazy. But this year, the Hurricane is a nice successor to the Gallardo. And uh, also, of course, McLaren had the 650S, which looked great. And um, it's apparently uh, quite quite an amazing car. And then there were some truly out there cars like the Koenigsegg 1, Uh, which is claimed to be now the world's fastest car with 1,400 horsepower and 400 kilometers per hour top speed. Yeah, and when you see those kind of uh, super performing cars, uh, you can see the industry is uh, recuperating pretty fast, pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a sort of in indicator. Um, I mean, in some of those cars, they've got you know fairly limited production, a few hundred, and they they claim they've all been sold already. So. Uh, and I saw some financial report that there, there are more billionaires in the world now than you know there have ever been, and their their numbers are increasing fast. So I think there's plenty of takers for those kind of cars. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Stefan uh, Winkerman said that the Lamborghini Huracan has 1,000 orders already before it was even shown. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, I know. And you know, when you consider um, that some of these cars are into seven-figure prices, um, it's uh, remarkable that they can sell them so quickly. Yeah, amazing. So, other uh, interesting news, I think it was the new Jeep, um, small version, what is it called? Uh, Renegade? The Renegade, which is, I guess, is based now on the 500L uh, platform, uh, because it's going to be made in Italy, right? That's right, yeah. So, Jeep, um, obviously, is doing well these days overall, and... Um, They've decided to kind of move into the small crossover market. Uh, personally, I, I wasn't too excited by the design of the Renegade, but, um, you know, in, the interior was good. Um, I, I wonder, uh, I, I, by all accounts, that market is doing very well, that segment of the market. So I'm sure with the Jeep name, it'll sell strongly. I just think they could have done a bit of a better job with the exterior design. Yeah, and uh, in any case, I, I mean, I haven't seen it. I was in Geneva. Uh, obviously, I've seen pictures, and uh, in any case, I think it, it's a much better version of the smaller SUVs that they had in the past, like the Compass and the Liberty and all those things that weren't really, really successful. Uh, that's true, yeah. Uh, the the last batch of sort of smaller Jeeps, um, which were still bigger than the Renegade, such as the Compass, have definitely uh, not been their best uh, work for quite a while. Um, the Compass, the Patriot, and, uh, and those were... You know, the, the less appealing of, of Jeeps in recent years, but um, I, I'm hoping that uh, they've got more stuff to come that they're really going to get back on track in the design sense. Yeah, and now I think with uh, being with uh, merged with Fiat, I think they're going to really, really take advantage of both uh, ends of technology and knowledge and like uh, things to, to really come up with better cars, no? Yes, overall, um, I mean, it's been a bit hit and miss so far, but uh, I think. Yeah, once they get into the into the groove, they will they will start producing some some better cars already. The, the Chrysler 200 that was shown in Detroit is far better than its predecessor, so they're showing signs of progress. Yeah. So we're talking to John McCormick, who uh, is um, the director of the World Car of the Year Award at your panel, and also works for AOL Autos and uh, Detroit. Uh, which one is it? Detroit uh, Times. Detroit News. News, I'm sorry. Detroit News. So, speaking of the business of the World Car of the Year Award, uh, every year, uh, for, the, for the past 10 years, right, uh, they have announced the finalist uh, for the award that is going to be presented finally in New York uh, in April. So, um, can you, John, please uh, tell us a little bit about the list? Yeah, sure. Um, what happens is at the Geneva show, uh, we announce the, the three finalists in the various categories we have. And actually, the fine, you know, the winner is already known, but not to us. That, that's just known to the accounting company and will be uh, revealed at the New York Quarter show in April. 
Um, but so the overall world car of the year, the finalists were the Audi A3, BMW 4 Series, and the Mazda 3. Um, so an interesting little grouping there. Um, obviously, two sort of more uh, higher-end German marks, and then the uh, more affordable Mazda 3. Um, I think uh, I'm very pleased the Mazda 3 made it because I think Mazda's been doing really good design work and engineering work in the recent years. And the Mazda 3, in its class, to me, is clearly the most interesting and then fun to drive car. Yeah, it's a, one of those cars that I, when I, I, I drove it, I mean, like, from even, like, the feeling of the steering wheel, it feels like a solid, good, really reliable car, just from that feeling. And then the performance is, uh, supports that. Yeah, exactly. So it's an enthusiast car, and I think uh, I'm pleased that uh, my fellow jury members have uh, decided that was eligible as well. Yeah, so uh, for this so, year, uh, the, the, the awards expanded to five categories, right? So now we have World Luxury Car of the Year, too? Yes, we added a new category this year, World Luxury Car, and in that category, the finalists were the Bentley Flying Spur, Mercedes S-Class, and the Range Rover Sport. Um, they're all good, very good vehicles. Uh, I drove the Spur most recently and uh, very impressed with its refinement and uh, smoothness. And uh, it, it, uh, it, of course, is a bit overshadowed in some areas by the S-Class, which has so many systems on it, safety systems and uh, comfort features, that it, it's, um, you probably need about uh, six months just to learn everything I the know. S-Class can do. It's an amazing car. Um, yeah, then World Pro- car. And, yeah, I'm sorry. World Performance Cars of the Year, uh, the Chevrolet, uh, Stingray, the Ferrari 458 Speciali, and the Porsche. Porsche seems to be there every year. Yes, Porsche sort of has a, <laughs> uh, a, a pass to get in um, with whatever they do. Um, I'm most excited about the Corvette being in there because I really think the C7, the seventh generation Corvette, is a spectacular uh, arrival in, in, and by far the better than the previous Corvette generation Corvette. And as uh, a U.S.-based uh, juror for the World Car of the Year, I'm very pleased to see an American entry in there. Yeah, you know, um, you, know, know. you know, I was a bit disappointed that the Cadillac CTS didn't get into the uh, World Car of the Year finalists. I know. And the Corvette but, already. Yeah, got the, yeah, I'm sorry. The Corvette already won the North American Car of the Year award, so maybe you could make it in the, the, the World Performance Car of the Year too. Then two more yeah, categories. Yeah. Sorry, John, we will have like one minute left here. Uh, so okay. we have yeah, the, sure. the World Green Car of the Year, again, uh, an Audi, a BMW, and a Volkswagen. That's correct. And then, and then for the World Design is a BMW i3, which is also in the Green Car, and Mazda 3 again, that's great, for its design, and the C-Class Mercedes. Yeah, and, uh, and again, uh, I, I didn't mention it at the beginning, but I have to thank John and the rest of the members of the World Car of the Year Award, because for the first time this year, I uh, have the honor of being a juror too, based here in the U.S. So thank you very much for that, John. And uh, uh, so we will see in New York uh, the winners, and um, hopefully it's going to be pretty exciting a uh, show, right? Absolutely, yes. It's always good fun to be uh, there, and I uh, welcome you to the committee, to the jurors, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, and uh, John, where can our audience can find more about uh, your work, please? Yes, you, uh, we have a website, uh, wcoty.com, and uh, you can learn all about the details of the awards on that. And about you, what about your your own things? Sorry, your own your own uh, publications. Oh yes, and for me, yeah, as I say, you can learn about more uh, about me at the Detroit News, the detnews.com, and uh, some of the other publications I work for are uh, also uh, listed there. Thank you very much, John, and I'll see you in New York. Hopefully the weather will be better. (laughs) Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.